Embryonic stem cells have been known for nearly 30 years. Uh, first embryonic stem cells were derived in mouse, and it was done in 1981 by two group of researchers, Evan and Kaufman and uh, Gail Martin, and they derived it from mouse embryos. So usually in the mammalian system, embryonic stem cells are derived from pre-implantation embryos, and which consist um, the name of the um, stage of the embryo is a blastocyst. A blastocyst is a spher spheric um, cell. It's actually not a cell, and it's a cell num uh, the, the embryo that uh, has um, about 120 cells inside. So the outer layer of the blastocyst is um, make a placenta, which actually f after implantation feed the embryos. And then there is a actual cells that they call the cell mass that they call inner cell mass, from w from which actually uh, the um, the whole embryo. Uh, develops. In this inner cell mass, before implantation, you can actually um, extract it from the mouse or any other mammalian blastocyst, and you can actually uh, derive them and um, maintain them in culture. The whole process is not, it's been quite uh, technically challenging, and especially it was challenging for other mammalian species. And I think it's, it's kind of revolutionized, uh, revolutionized the, the biology itself, because by using these embryonic stem cells, um, um, the biologists could answer lots of questions, um, genetic questions. So what are they? These are the cells that have a certain characteristics, and those characteristics are defined their stem cell properties. So they, uh, they divide indefinitely compared to any other cell type in the body. It means they proliferate. Uh, it might be different, the proliferation capacity in vivo, meaning in, in utero, uh, versus in vitro. So we have to mention that embryonic stem cells are actually taking from the embryo and being artificially maintained in vitro. By doing this, they acquire some genetic and epigenetic changes, and those things we actually study in the research laboratories. So um, there are different types of stem cells unknown. So those are adult stem cells, fetal stem cells. And the difference between embryonic stem cells and um, adult stem cells or fetal stem cells are the, they actually differ and they actually have a common characteristic. The common characteristic, they would divide indefinitely. But um, the, the differences between them, the embryonic stem cells are unspecified stem cells. So they can actually, they cannot make any function that would, for example, um, other type cells would. For example, they can't um, mm, transfer the oxygen like red blood cells would, or they cannot do the function of the skin cells. But adult stem cells um, do have a s restricted characteristic compared to embryonic stem cells, meaning that they actually would differentiate only into tissues that they can arise from. So if it is a brain, um, stem cells, we call them neural stem cells, they can differentiate it only to the lineages of nervous system. Um, the embryonic stem cells compared to adult or fetal stem cells can differentiate to complete type of cells of the body. So either it's a nerve uh, cells or cardiac muscles or skin cells. So that's the probably differences and similarities between embryonic and other type of not only stem cells, but also between adults and fetal stem cells. The limitation of adult stem cells, for example, is that um, the number of those cells are limited. Uh, derivation of those cells have been very challenging for the field of uh, biology. We know that um, the therapeutic um, application was actually developed from adult stem cells, for example, hematopoietic system. So um, it's the derivatives of the, any type of blood cells, they would um, be a bone marrow cells. So we know that there are nearly 40 years um, 
bone marrow cells were derived, those are hematopoietic stem cells, and they were used very successfully for transplantation. But growing those cells in 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 vitro culture were quite challenging, and it's still um, not uh, possible. So embryonic stem cells in the mouse were derived 30 years ago, and it's been used as a mouse model of human diseases, mostly. So embryonic stem cells, uh, since they were um, derived in culture, they can make indefinite cell numbers in vitro. So they can change in in, in 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 vitro culture. So the changes could be genetic, so they can acquire uh, chromosomal abnormalities, um, point mutations, and those are artifacts of in vitro cultures. So there is a, two types of embryonic um, stem cells. For example, embryonic carcinoma cells. This is, was the first actually derived by the scientist. And Peter Andrews in UK had been uh, characterized these cells types very, very um, uh, uh, detail in detail. And embryonic carcinoma cells compared to embryonic stem cells, it comes from the embryo. But the difference between them, embryonic carcinoma cells are actually derived from embryonic tumors. So they would be different between embryonic stem cells. They would have abnormal uh, chromosomal numbers. So genetically, they are abnormal. And they would be more um, probably, um, they would still have a lot of characteristic of embryonic stem cells. But embryonic stem cells from the blastocyst, from normal blastocyst, they would have a normal chromosome number, uh, normal epigenetic um, features. And they would actually be propagated in the lab, and especially um, the lab of Rudolf Janisch had um, developed the technologies of gene targeting with these cells. So what they have done in the past 30 years, they introduced genes, they labeled those genes, and they actually follow those genes in development. And it could be um, genes that are important, not just for the mammalian development, but also genes that would actually be important for the normal function. And they could actually, the deletions or mutations in those, in those genes uh, been shown, especially when you actually label, you can follow and can make a disease, model of the disease, of human diseases. This probably was the biggest uh, application of um, mouse embryonic stem cells. Human embryonic stem cells were derived nearly 20 years later after mouse embryonic stem cells. And this was probably not just the technical challenges, but um, the whole technology, um, the procedure is very similar. But it is because there is lots of ethical issues with human, with uh, the, um, um, having a human embryos available. So what it's been done in 1998, a um, group of um, um, scientists from University of Wisconsin, Jamie, uh, Jamie Thompson's group, have derived first a human embryonic stem cell lines. So this, those lines were derived from leftover human embryos after in vitro fertilization. So usually couples come to in vitro clinic if they have some reproductive issues and they would um, do um, in vitro fertilization. So usually during that um, procedure, not one oocytes will be um, fertilized, well, not one egg, but usually a couple of eggs. And it could result in a couple of embryos developed. And um, they would trans only um, few embryos into um, into women, and if it's successfully implanted, and couple have uh, already succeeded having the kids, so there are some leftover embryos, and by um, having these leftover embryos, couple would have to make a decision: either they would um, donate these embryos for, they can use it for future use, or um, they can come back and implant another embryo in order to have um, another more kids, or they can actually donate to another couple who are actually going through the same issues with uh, reproduction issues, or they can they have a third um, option they can actually donate for research, 
And here we come as a scientist, we take those embryos and we can isolate uh, stem cells from them. And this, um, the derivation of human stem cells brought um, new um, application for these cells. And a particular um, application is uh, regenerative medicine. The most intriguing questions of, of um, um, particular human embryonic stem cells is um, the application for those for cell-based therapies. So if these cells can actually be differentiated to the tissue that actually took place, uh, uh, the t t tissue that's been damaged, and it can these cells replace that tissue by, uh, by t uh, transplantation. Um, so this was probably the biggest challenge and the biggest probably drive uh, in the research with embryonic stem cells. So um, there's a lot of um, still fundamental studies we have to uh, perform in, uh, in uh, research labs before we actually move to this probably. It's, I would say it's still quite a few years uh, to, to actually achieve those. And we know that there are already um, clinical trials by using embryonic stem cells, particularly for uh, spinal cord injuries. And there is a company, Gyron, who actually already performed these trials and had to stop it, not just because, the, as far as um, we know, not because um, these trials would been unsuccessful, as much as these were quite costly and very expensive to continue. And there is another company, Advanced Cell Technology, who started um, macular degeneration, um, the transplantation for macular degenerative disease. And it's a, um, a retinal ep um, pigmental epithelium that has been derived from human embryonic stem cells and has been transplantation already um, done. And we still don't know um, actual results. And I think it's it will take quite a few years before we see the results. And the biggest issue with transplantation of these cells is uh, the homogeneity of these cells. Are these um, cells are safe for transplantation? We don't know yet. If there is any leftover of undifferentiated embryonic cells still left. Um, and also, uh, immunogenicity of these cells, how you can overcome immuno. Um, Defic I mean, immunorejection, that's probably the biggest issue in, in, this, um, in this field. And here would come what probably would be um, perfect if, if um, we can do patient-specific uh, stem cells. And here's it uh, with, uh, been developed by our lab and first it was developed by Yamanaka's group in, in 2006 in mice and in 2007-8 in human. So induced pluripotent stem cells where uh, the, uh, the technology was developed. So it is induced Somatic cells, for example, completely differentiated cells, have been induced to become embryonic stem cells. And they called um, induced pluripotent stem cells. So embryonic stem cells are, has to be derived from human embryo, which is an ethical issue. So, but induced pluripotent stem cells are derived from the patients or uh, the skin, for example, skin fibroblast induced by introduction of transgen in a, uh, an ectopic expression of the um, key transcription factors. So what it does, the, the, the transgenes that you introduce into genome of the uh, somatic cells that is completely differentiated, so then it, it, it activates the endogenous uh, transcription factors, and those are the key transcription factors to maintain undifferentiated stem cell fate. So, and this is how um, this technology was developed. And um, the differences are, so we still don't know, so embryonic stem cells are golden standards, so they haven't been changed. So we don't know if we completely reprogrammed the, for example, skin cells uh, to embryonic stem cells, which 
by number of publications been shown that they behave the same, they express the same genes, and they, um, they morphologically uh, look the same, and they can differentiate to the mm, three germ layers to begin with and to tissues of, of interest. And pretty much they have shown in the past several years that they completely um, um, mimic embryonic stem cells, but we don't quite know yet if the epigenetically these cells are the same. And it's been shown by a number of um, publications that um, embryonic stem cells, the um, induced pluripotent stem cells, iPS cells, are um, different. Um, compared to embryonic stem cells. So what in every lab what we do, we have a golden standard. If we do something with induced pluripotent stem cells, we have um, control embryonic stem cells, either differentiation to the same way. And in the end, after transplantation, we need to know if um, a few years after transplantation probably will show how different these cells could be.